Before I owned the Kindle, I did not know all these warnings and I really wish someone told me about this. If I've heard about these warnings, I might not have bought the Kindle. I've been using the Kindle for the past 6 years and I love it. And yes, it is amazing. After using it for a while, I realized I have some reservations about the Kindle and these are the 3 warnings that you need to listen to before you buy the Kindle. The 3 warnings are Kindle books are actually more expensive. Number 2 is your data would be stored in the Amazon ecosystem. And the third thing is you can only borrow books only if you have Kindle Unlimited. I really appreciate if you like my video and subscribe to my channel. Kindle books are really expensive. As someone who really enjoys reading physical books, I love flipping the pages, I love smelling the book. It's part of that sensory experience, isn't it? I also love collecting physical books. I still compare the prices between the physical books and also the Kindle books. I've always thought buying Kindle would help me save money on buying books because, you know, it is a digital product and you don't need extra printing to buy those books. But in fact, physical books have more discounts and Kindle books usually don't for publishing company, it is really cheap for them to produce one book. So even though the paper that you buy might be expensive, the margin for the publishing company to earn is actually still quite a bit. And because the Kindle books and the physical books run a different business model, Kindle books can actually be charged at a higher premium compared to a physical book. Plus, because you already bought this Amazon Kindle, they can already charge a higher premium for your convenience. And because of that, you're willing to pay because of all the sum costs. The second warning that you need to know is that your data will be stuck in the Amazon ecosystem. I use the iPhone and I'm already trapped in the Apple ecosystem. All my data are inside, including photos, text, and same goes for my Kindle. I've already bought so many books there. And because of that, I have a huge reluctance to change. Plus, the Amazon site is also very smart because they use AI to recommend books that you might like. Also, because reading these books, I have all the highlights. All these highlights are stuck in the Amazon ecosystem. And that made it harder to retrieve all this data because I want to refer to this note someday. And talking about highlights, some of the books have highlights by the community, which shows the number of people who are highlighting the same exact sentence. This probably made you think about the importance of the sentence and probably highlight them too. And apart from that, the Goodreads is also attached to the Amazon account. Since they're in the same ecosystem, it is really easy to update all the books that you're reading to Goodreads. If I change it to e-reader or a physical book, I could not update my progress on GoodNotes. And because of that, there are so many inconveniences changing the ecosystem to something else. And talk about inconveniences, synchronization occurs all the time. If I read page 26 on the Kindle, it will be synchronized nicely on my phone over here. But if I use something else, then this synchronization would not happen and I have to remember where mm. I've stopped reading. So all in all, just like the Apple ecosystem, your data is all stuck in the Amazon ecosystem. The third warning that I have is that you cannot borrow any books unless you have Kindle Unlimited and there are also limited selection of those books. One of my guilty pleasure is buying books. I love reading so consequently, I have to buy a lot of books to keep up with those readings. And when I was looking through my monthly expenses, I realized I spent quite a bit of money on reading. I was really reluctant to spend money on buying books anymore. I want to borrow books. In Amazon ecosystem, the way to borrow books is that you have to sign up for the Kindle Unlimited and it costs a monthly of $10. I was very tempted to sign up for the Kindle Unlimited but I realized some of the books that I really want to read is not included in the Kindle Unlimited. And that's when I realized the selection is really quite limited. So on top of the Kindle Unlimited, I still have to buy books that I want to read. Does that make sense? I'm not sure. The act of borrowing books is to reduce the cost buying books. It seems that I have to spend more just to get to the book that I want to read. And because of that, it really deters me from signing up for Kindle Unlimited. So with these three warnings, if I were given those warnings earlier, I would have thought otherwise. I really love the Kindle and the Amazon ecosystem. It really synchronized very nicely. All my data are all there. Personally, I'm looking for options outside of Kindle, but there's nothing that could replace very well what the Kindle can do. There's one particular e-reader that I'm looking into and it's called the Kobo. The Kobo has this app called the Libby and it's synchronized nicely to my local public library. So do you have a Kindle? What do you think about it? And if you have other considerations as well, comment down below. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I really appreciate your time. Take care in the meantime. Bye!